Hi guys, second episode of how to make the Van Kemmenaar model. Again, a little overview. We just explained how we create the quarks and the photons ranging from quarks right up to the ultraviolet catastrophe. Um, over here I have three of those quarks. And these quarks, um, well, they are pretty solid as a whole because those little, you remember those little uh, hooks I told you about, this is a boss spring with little hooks, they are hooked and twined, they're pretty strong as a whole. Um, two of those, they make up for a meson, two quarks make up for a meson, and it doesn't need much fantasy to see this is a very weak particle, and in fact, in reality, a mason is just, well, you can ignore it because it's very temporary here. It doesn't survive very long in the sea of gravitons. Let me show you how easy this thing falls apart. So it falls apart pretty easy. But if we have a third, a third uh, quark holding the other two together, you get this. And I will demonstrate that this thing, um, those three quarks are not glued together here. They're just freely uh, clicked together. They all hold each other in place. Every single quark holds the other two in place. This is three quarks. Oh, well, that's what I wanted to show you. You can drop this thing a gazillion times. It will not break apart. It will remain a nucleon. So a nucleon is made out of three quarks and it's pretty damn solid. Well, this is actually a neutron and this is a proton. And the only difference is a proton has one of those electrons sticking out. See, so it spins around this blue axis. This one has a bigger circumference and therefore goes faster, making it far easier to, uh, well, to connect to another one. So that's uh, as in a chemical reaction. So that's why those uh, orbiting electrons have valence. Um, now with these um, nucleons, I can make atoms and um, you can make a full scale like these two. This is, of course, iron, you remember it. And there's something like lithium or so, a little small element. And I overstretched, in this case, I overstretched the blue members, the crystal structure, to make it more, well, more open. If you look at these two, you see it's a bit of a clutter. It's not very... Uh, how you call it, not very open. This is a really open structure. And you can change, uh, and this is a, a neutron, you can change neutrons into protons and back and in nature, things like that happen. And that's the only thing what happens is one stretches out because it has enough space to do so. And it, uh, sometimes it doesn't have that room and it has to have a low profile remaining a a neutron. So those are the really full-scale uh, models, very complete. And um, but that's too uh, complicated. So I want to make a simplified model uh, on a smaller scale. Um, over here, I have a Q-tip. This one is uh, well, they're very recognizable and very cheap too. They're very cheap, not cheap, cheap. And every cube represents a nucleon. Um, when making atoms, and that's the fun part of this thing, it doesn't matter which of these three quarks makes up for the crystal structure. Because if you hold the blue ones, the other two can circle. If you hold the red one, the other two can spin, circle, and yellow. Same thing, so it doesn't matter how they get compressed in those uh, stars or in those supernovas. 
it doesn't matter their orientation, doesn't matter, they can all uh, end up being the same atoms. The fun part is it doesn't even matter whether it's a neutron or a, a proton, because a proton is no more than a neutron having one of those uh, electrons or gravitons is the same object sticking out a little. Now to make this one I used a little bit of glue on this side because else they it would fall apart. Now in reality that glue isn't there at all but as earlier I said I don't have uh, pear shaped bolts, only circular bolts and therefore I had to uh, if it was a pear shaped ball it would hold them in place but I don't have those so I had to take this little ball, stretch it outwards a little, and then glue those in place. Making a neutron allows some play, so you can demonstrate how easy these things can spin, and why we don't need gluons in this model. So keep a little play if you make a neutron. Well, these things, these two, they come in handy, but they're especially for the bigger models for the for the small scale let me show um this is a tripod which is equals this one this is a four part equaling that one so we have a single q-tip representing a nucleon these are four nucleons one on top one two three legs this is five made out of five nucleons one on top one two three, four legs. You can see the other one over there on the back side. Right, so these buggers are represented by these. And uh, now we're gonna, I'm going to tell you about docking things and it's gonna get, it's a bit complicated now, but if you'll understand it later on. If you have a nucleon, you can see there are one, two, three, four, other side, one, two, three, four. There are eight positions where you can dock another nucleon, dock it like this. And that's the maximum, eight positions. And when that happens, it gridlocks the top quark and it's not a top quark with the, the quark on top. So it gets gridlocked because it ducks four of these. Other nucleons, so this is five nucleons, this one is gridlocked, cannot spin, these can spin and therefore only these four contribute to the weight of the atom. Now uh, weight depends on, it's just an interaction weight, it's an interaction between the spinning quarks and the gravitons, whereas mass has to do with the total number of balls or gravitons, if you will. So that's the difference between weight and uh, mass. Weight and mass are not related in no way. It's a big mistake. Um, if we concentrate on the blue balls, we can see the four legs. You can one, two, three, they're in a row, they're aligned. We can see those four legs and then added are those spinning quarks. Um, over here, same thing, one on top is gridlock because there are three of those things sticking to it. And I, to make this model, this one is aligned. Blue, you see three blue balls, vertical aligned. Look at the side, and you see I bent them backwards in this direction. And that is also with this thing. Why? To make the bottom become triangular. Now I have a nice triangle bottom. That sounds weird. Well, you have to uh, keep something else in mind, and that's important for the valence. But that's the next thing. I'm going to show you how to make those smaller scale atoms and how to determine which ones are the protons, which ones are the neutrons. That is it for now. Thanks.